Now we are going to deal with the topic called as refraction of light from 11th standard. Refraction of light means it is the basically the change in velocity of light in different media. And then it is converted into ratios called refractive index, means velocity of light in rarer medium upon velocity of light in denser medium. Rarer medium in the sense it is air or vacuum and denser medium means any other medium. We will go one by one. Absolute refractive index means when it is mu, sometimes it is called in many books as n also, so it is n also treated, but generally in 11th and 12th standard it is written as mu. C is the specific name for velocity of light in air or vacuum. V is the velocity of light in any other medium. This is absolute refractive index. Then what is relative refractive index? Relative refractive index means the numerator is any other medium than the air or vacuum. So it is 2 with respect to 1. V1 upon V2, that is velocity of light in medium 1 upon velocity of light in medium 2. Medium 1 other than air, that time only you say relative refractive index. I have used the short form RI for refractive index. Now, relative refractive index is also mentioned in terms of absolute refractive indices, that is, refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1 is mu 2 upon mu 1. Mu 2 is the refractive absolute refractive index of medium 2. Mu 1 is the absolute refractive index of medium 1. So 2 with respect to 1 is equal to 1 upon 1 with respect to 2. Now going to the next part, fourth point, mu is in terms of real depth and apparent depth. So basically to with respect to what it is mentioned, Suppose this is the glass slab and for this glass slab, suppose this slab is kept on some uh, written material. Suppose we take it as a ink spot here. Then when you look from the air here through this glass to this ink spot, the ink spot will be, you will find it raised to certain height. So from the top surface, this is apparent depth. Is it really located at this spot? No. So it is apparent depth and it is actually located at this point that is real depth. So derivation we don't want to go into. Directly we get the formula. Refractive index is equal to real depth upon apparent depth. Then going to the fifth point, Snell's law, it is sin i upon sin r. i is always in medium 1 and R is always in medium 2 that is lambda 1 upon lambda 2 so basically when the light travels from one medium to other medium there is no change in frequency remember well there is always change in wavelength and that's why it is the ratio of wavelengths coming to the next point there is one aspect called as now there is one important concept that is called as total internal reflection. So this is a denser medium. This is the denser medium. So condition for total reflection, internal reflection is basically light should travel from denser medium to rarer medium. And that time, the initially this is suppose I1, that time refraction is taking place then it is I2, still refraction is taking place. Then it is I3, which is equal to IC, that is critical angle. The angle of refraction is 90 degrees. That is, the ray of light is going grazing. Grazing means along the surface. Grazing. So this is called as critical angle IC, for which Angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degrees. After this, when incident light at the denser rarer medium surface is there, the light will get totally internally reflected. Totally internally reflected. 
it will not be refraction it is the outcome of refraction but it is internal reflection and it is total internal reflection so for that critical angle ic is equal to sin inverse 1 upon mu same same way sin ic is equal to 1 upon mu is equal to lambda 2 upon lambda 1 now we go to the prism there is a prism abc and that a is the angle of prism angle of prism is not necessarily always the apex angle it is the angle between two surfaces through which the refraction is taking place there is one incident light and one is emergent light so those two surfaces angle between them is whatever the angle is there it is angle of prism so always it is a equal to r1 plus r2 r1 and r2 are the angles of refraction inside the prism angle e is the emergent angle this is the emergent ray this is the incident ray this is the incident angle angle of incidence this is angle of emergence there is one important formula which is i plus e is equal to a plus delta a is equal to always r1 plus r2 so we will go to the next formula for minimum deviation what is the condition for minimum deviation all of you know it it is in this ray is parallel to the surface this base suppose this abc is a prism i then angle of refraction is r1 but in case of this r1 is equal to r2 and i is equal to e is the condition for minimum deviation minimum deviation is also mentioned as delta m so where is the deviation actually minimum deviation basically what is deviation angle between extended incident ray extended incident ray in forward direction and extended emergent ray in a backward direction is called angle of deviation delta so angle between extended incident ray in forward direction and extended emergent ray in backward direction is called delta and this delta will become minimum when this ray is parallel to the base when ray is parallel to the base of the prism 